Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2. Last time, we made it through the Ignis Shrine, conquered it, defeated the Guardian, and now we're going to go on up here and get the Zemurian Ore that we need for Valimar's weapon. Wow, there's a lot of ore there. Looks like a really big load. Oh, that's true, Emma. Yeah. Okay, I mean, there are six of them there. Uh, hey, and we get the Zemurian Ore Crystal. Oh, wow, they really took it all, didn't they? Huh. It's like nothing left. Oh, yeah, but I don't really see anything in front of you guys. Hmm, maybe it's just like a little item that you throw in your pocket or something. Who knows? Oh, yeah, George would know about that. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna head on back to the ship, and uh, I'll just meet you there. Oh, everybody's here, and there's the ore in a coffin? What the hell is that? Kind of strange. You know, wouldn't it be nice if uh, if the crystal was, like, red, almost as, it, almost as if it was, like, the, you know, the, uh, the crystal of fire, since we got it at, a, you know, the fire shrine? That would be a nice throwback to Final Fantasy, but apparently not. It just kind of looks very life streamy ish I don't know. Oh, that's true, but, I mean, you don't need a lot of it to make the sword. All you gotta do is kind of, like, put the, uh, ore, you know, on, on the point of the sword, or on the edges of the sword. You don't need it for the handle or anything else. Oh, yeah, Tachi. I am assuming that's a sword. Ah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, we could gather a lot more. I mean, Valimar does need a really big weapon, and there are three other spirit shrines. Yeah, just like I said, you are going to have to go through all of the shrines. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you choose first. Um, you know, y you will get the treasure from the one that you do first, so that's probably the best way to choose is just, you know, which treasure do you want. And I really like that quartz that I got last time. It gives a 150 strength to Reen. It's so nice. I mean, yeah, it does lower his defense, but I'm uneasy. Who really cares about that? You know, maybe you don't equip it on a nightmare mode or something, but otherwise, I think it'll be fine. Oh, yeah, I was wondering why you were down here, princess. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, Reen does everything around here. Does he ever get a break? I mean, like, he has to go on every single mission, do all these inane side quests, and all we have are these, you know, tons of Thor students... Why don't the Thor students help out every once in a while? I mean, what are they doing just sitting around on their ass? Who knows? Okay, so we've gotten all the quests done, gotten everything else done, so let's go ahead and talk to George and uh, help him out building his workshop. Okay, you just told us that game. Um, sure. I'll be your gopher. Why not? Can do. Imagine building an entire workshop would be incredibly exhausting. Wow, look at the size of that sword! It's huge! Oh, and there's the coffin full of the ore back there. I guess you didn't put it onto the sword yet? Oh, okay. So you just had to kind of set it up. Well, that's the plan. I mean, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel here. Okay, awesome, sweet. More power! Hey, I'm all about it. Sure thing. Oh, it's hard to work with? That's not good. Wait, Valimar helped out too? What could Valimar possibly do? Maybe he had to kind of, like, you know, lift and move the sword around because it was just, you know, so heavy. So it's Christmas Eve, hey hey! Has this entire game only taken place within the course of, like, one month so far? It really seems that way. Because didn't it start, I want to say, in, like, December 8th was the first day, I'm pretty sure? And now we're only, like, what, 16 days in, I think? We're getting a lot accomplished in not that long a time. Oh. Well, great! You guys actually took my suggestion, and you only put the, uh, 
metal where it needed to be, right on the edges. Awesome. So maybe we won't have to go to all the different shrines and get more of it? Hopefully not, but... No. <laughs> We're gonna have to go. Um, yeah, sure it was. There's Celine being a bitch again, as usual. I like Celine. She's just, like, no matter what you do, she's always just so mean to you. She's just like a cat. I think all cats are like that. My cat was growing up. She was evil. <laughs> oh, but I miss her. She's gone now. Okay. Yeah, certainly. Well, what's going on? Oh, you're all still here. Toa? Is that you? What's wrong? Are you okay? What happened to your hat? Toa? What's wrong? It's not like you to be so flustered. It, it's terrible. We got an emergency report in from the Twin Dragons Bridge. It, it's Keldic. Keldic's. Keldic? What happened to Keldic? It was set on fire by the Kreutzen Provincial Army. What? What? Oh no, that's horrible! I hope everybody's alright. Okay. Hey, and we get to choose our party, but at this point it really does not matter who is in your party at all. Just pick whoever, I don't really give a damn. We're gonna get to choose, you know, our party later anyway. This is pretty much your party just for exploring, so whatever, it doesn't really matter. Wow. Keldic looks really bad. Ooh. Looks like it wasn't just set on fire. It looks like it was, like, run over by tanks, too. Is everybody all right? I don't see any people. Oh, there they all are. Oh, well, everybody looks fine. Hopefully they're all safe. I mean, that's, you know, one shining thing at least. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, probably just to, you know, set an example and not let towns declare neutrality, because of course, as we all know, neutral towns in JRPGs never get attacked. Of course. Poor Usus. Isn't the Cruisin' Provincial Army led by Usus's father? I'm pretty sure it is. And this is his province, too, so we have three places to go to. The church, the manager's house, and then over by the um, train station as well. So let's head inside the chapel first of all, and see what we got going on here. Let's see, just right over here. Oh, is she alright? Maybe she's just tired. Oh, wait, isn't this the girl that works in the inn? I guess Sarah would be concerned about her considering, you know, all Sarah ever does is hang out at that inn and drink like a frickin' fish. Oh, wow, a blow to the head. So is she in a coma? Does she have brain damage? I hope that she's not gonna be a vegetable. I mean, at least she's alive. That's something. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, but you know what, as far as talking to all these other NPCs that are around, I'm gonna be doing that in the end slate of this video. So just wait until I'm, like, done doing everything that I have to do, and then we'll go around, talk to everybody, and see what's going on with all of them. Huh. Well, at least she's okay. I mean, at least she's alive. I hope Louise will be okay. She wasn't the only familiar face, either. No, Laura's right. There was a lot of other people injured in there. And we'll talk to them again during the end slate. I hope that the market manager's okay. What's going on up here? Is everything alright? You okay, Otto? Maybe he's in a coma, too? Come back to you? Is he dead? What happened to him? Are they actually going to kill somebody in a JRPG? 
Oh, well, shit, he got hit by a soul that. That's pretty much instant death for these guys. Oh, that's horrible. He was such a good guy, too. He was like the heart and soul of this town. And he was like one of the few people that actually change their dialogue as you go from act to act to act. Like, I would come back to this town and talk to, like, some, you know, random people, and, like, nobody would, you know, say anything new, but he always would. So, you know, miss him. But I guess he's gone for good. What are we supposed to do? Well, you gotta do what every JRPG hero does. Get that sweet, sweet revenge! We'll go kick the Noble Alliance's ass, and then they won't be able to do this in any other towns. That's one way to look at it, at least. <laughs> Poor guy. I really do feel bad for him, I've gotta say. Oh, hey, how are you doing? Looks like the whole crew's here. Oh, well, no problem. We couldn't exactly hear this news and then not come. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah, under the leadership of Eusus's father. Poor guy, I feel bad for Eusus. I really do. I mean, he, he must feel so conflicted right now. Yeah, no kidding, Laura. Oh, really? Huh. So, in a way, you're kind of at fault for this because your soldiers couldn't hold the bridge, so they broke through along with these asshole Jaegers. How are they not able to stop the Jaegers? Anybody can stop these Jaegers, especially if it's like those bugbear Jaegers that we saw earlier, or last time during that, um, what was it? It was that, um, oh, that airship side quest that we had to do. They were useless. They could probably fight them off with shovels and pitchforks or something. I mean, come on. Oh, but I mean, if they had soldats and everything else, I don't know what we could have possibly done. Oh, so they're all holed up in Berea hard. Hmm. Looks like we have our next place that we gotta go to all lined up. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, of course they would. You're there to push out the invaders. You're there to help them. You're... You're there to rescue them. You're there to save them. You're there to heal them. Oh, more than likely. No kidding. Oh, what did they say? I beg to differ. The presence of Soldot's units on a battlefield makes a tremendous difference. What they may lack in firepower and armor compared to tanks, they make up for in mobility and versatility. But more important than even those factors is the psychological impact they have on our opponents. We're only human. As such, we are as captivated as we are terrified of giant beings bearing human form. That's true, that does make sense. I mean, honestly, who wouldn't be afraid of that? You're living your own peaceful little life in this little town this little village, and all of a sudden, this huge, like, three-story tall soldat comes marching into the village along with tanks, and they set fire to the whole damn place. Everybody, of course, would be terrified. You'd be running for your life. Oh. Yeah, the fatality. That's right. Poor guy. No kidding. He was such a good guy. He was, like, the heart and soul of this village. And he was, like, the only person who actually, you know, changed his dialogue in meaningful ways. <laughs> it really was kind of ridiculous. Every time I come back to this town to, like, you know, check up on the dialogue and everything, I would talk to pretty much everybody and, like, they would say the exact same thing. Except for him. Every once in a while, he would have something new to say. So, that was kind of nice. Well, of course it's a war. But, of course, we also can't fight on your side, because that would make things far too easy. We still have to fight in our third way, our third faction. So what I'm going to do now is go around and talk to all the uh, various NPCs during the end slate. And next time on Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2, we're going to kick Eustace's dad's ass. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And have a good day.
no. <laughs> this is just awful. Thank you. 